In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this Damascus knife with stand out of an inexpensive knife blank that I got on Amazon for $39. Links for all the parts are gonna be in the description below. The knife blank had pretty good uh, reviews as far as the overall rating, but some people had claimed that it wasn't truly a Damascus blade. And on a, upon closer inspection, you can see that it looks like it's some kind of a surface etching or treatment. And later, when you look at my finished product, you can see where uh, when I was sanding at the wood handle, it is more obvious that it's not true Damascus. But that being said, this was meant to be a sort of a display type of gift for a knife collector, actually a, a friend of my kids who collects knives and uh, my kids helped me pick this one out. And so this, I think, will be great for those purposes. It's meant to be just a custom handmade gift for a friend. And uh, so yeah, this was a good base to start from. So the next step now is to choose what type of wood to use for the handle blanks. I had a few different pieces of wood from leftover from previous projects. And so I went through and got some feedback from the kids. And ultimately we settled on using a purple heart for the handle. Uh, it's, they just like the color purple and it also is a nice, good, durable uh, hardwood. And uh, so that should look pretty good. So the next step was to figure out what was the handle shape going to be like. And so I took a piece of scrap cardboard and traced out the, the actual metal handle itself and then even traced out the, the holes where the pins would go through and as well as figuring out where was this uh, front piece going to basically end the handle and where was the, the blade going to then protrude out. And then from that, I took it and scanned it just using my cell phone, uh, took a photo of it, brought it into the computer and then traced that in Adobe Illustrator so I can make this into a vector shape. And I also had to find out what was the actual size of these holes that went through the handle blank. It wasn't noted in the description on Amazon and I just needed to make sure that I ordered the right size pin material to go through this. Initially, I was thinking about using a brass rod and then I'll show you later what I actually chose. Um, but so yeah, I had to go ahead and make that, place that order and wait for that to arrive in the mail. So in the meantime, I just wanted to make sure I had my uh, measurements right. And I wanted to use my calipers, but it's kind of hard to get those little um, gauge pieces into the opening and actually get a good measurement. And so a trick that I found is that you can take some other thing, uh, ideally like a drill bit would be good because they're indexed. Uh, you know, you can use the uh, the actual size of the drill bit to be pretty accurate with um, helping you size a hole in something. Now, in this case, these drill bits didn't fit exactly into those holes. Um, it was something in between these uh, these sizes here. And so uh, what I ended up doing was I found something that would fit it. In this case, an Allen key uh, that was 5.5 millimeters in diameter um, across the, uh, the corners of it just kind of fit snugly in there. And then from there, I could measure the outside dimensions of that using my calipers. So the next step was to cut out a paper template from the vector file that I had in Illustrator at this point. Uh, and I just used some oak tag from a file folder. And so this is where I did kind of make a mistake here, or I guess I would say I would do it differently in the future. Instead of scanning the knife blank or scanning the paper template that I had made, I just used my phone and I tried to line it up straight down to get a good image to bring in uh, and trace over that, you know, in, in Illustrator to make my template. But I must have been just out of alignment a little bit and it wasn't perfectly lined up. So I just came in with a pencil and sort of sketched around the edges where it needed to be adjusted a little bit. Came back into Illustrator and made those adjustments and then my second try, it looked like it fit pretty well. So with that, I took my piece of uh, Purple Heart wood and uh, put it in the laser and basically looked at the grain and decided like where on this had the, the grain that I would want to see on the handle um, because there's some different areas with a little bit different looking grain here and there. And so I uh, made that decision and aligned the laser with that area. And then I went ahead and cut it out. For some woods, I like to wet it down before I use the laser on it. Uh, for me, I find that it's it's worth the hassle of having to dry it a little bit later. And what it does is it helps to prevent charring, uh, especially on sharp corners and fine detail areas. Now this is a 100 watt laser. And so on my particular laser, I'm running it at, uh, I believe it was eight millimeters a second at 70% uh, power. That's the highest that I run it at just to conserve the life of my tube. And with that, I had to do two passes to get through cleanly. And uh, so that was enough though to cut out my two blanks. And so then I just took them and uh, used some 
uh, bolts that I had just to temporarily fasten them together with the knife blank so that way I can get a sense of uh, you know how I should be shaping and rounding the edges to have it be a, a good feel on the hand. The pin material that I bought on Amazon uh, was going to take a couple of days to arrive and uh, as you can see here it's a stainless steel tube a quarter inch in outer diameter but inside it has six pieces of brass rod of two different sizes and then the little gaps between are filled with black epoxy. And so for the rough shaping of the handle, I'm using my Random Orbit Sander and I'm just going over it, starting off here with 80 grit. And that's just letting me kind of round over, get a good sort of initial shape here. I'm not too worried about uh, hitting these nuts and uh, scratching them up because I'm just considering them sacrificial. They'll come out when the pin material goes in. After I get the rough shaping taken care of, then I'm going back now with some finer grit paper ending at 220 grit uh, and getting the handle to be a good overall shape. I'm not super worried about the final smoothness of it yet because the next step would be epoxy. At this point, the pin material came in the mail and I was pretty happy with the way it looked here. And what you don't see is I cut this into some short sections just long enough to fit through and use some West System epoxy to attach the sides of the handle onto the blank, um, making sure that I cleaned it really well with acetone and gave it a sanding uh, on the metal itself as well to get good adhesion. Uh, and you can see here the remnants of the plastic that was wrapped around the handle. Um, I put plastic around it after I had the epoxy in there and then clamped it up really tight, left it overnight to dry. And, uh, and this is the way it looks after the fact. And now at this point, I'm just gonna use the sander and get all this junk off and uh, just do some final shaping and then go to progressively finer and finer paper and get this handle looking good. The ends of the pin material were cut kind of rough by the jigsaw blade uh, when I cut it to length, uh, but the sanding process moves that out. In this case, a leather sheath wasn't really the ideal thing for this knife because I didn't want it to be uh, worn to be used, but it's more of just a display knife. And so off camera, I designed in Illustrator a, uh, a sort of a flat design that would fold together and make a stand that would hold it up on an angle. So that way it kind of featured the handle of the knife and, and kind of showed off the cool shape of the blade itself. So I used my laser again and I cut out of another piece of quarter inch thick Purple Heart, uh, the pieces for the stand. And uh, then I went and used the sander and just cleaned it up, sand a nice fine surface. One of the things with Purple Heart is that when you sand it, it gets sort of more of a brownish look to it, uh, but the purple color sort of goes away. And to get that purple color back, you need to expose it to UV light before you put your finish on it. If you put on like a UV protected finish, you can actually have Purple Heart that has more of a brownish look to it. So in this case, I took the, uh, the all the parts and put them outside and just let them sit in the sun for a few hours. And then that kind of brought some of that purple color back into it. And then at this point, I put on some finish and the knife is ready to be gifted and go on display. This will probably go on the tabletop or on a shelf or something like that. And uh, you know, it would just be part of the collection that she's got in her room. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. All the links for the pin material, the handle blank, the epoxy, are all in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about the laser that I'm using, let me know in the comments and I'd be glad to do an overview on my uh, 100 watt CO2 laser that I've got and why I chose that and why I would go ahead and actually recommend that to others who are interested in getting a, a laser for their home or for their business. If you thought this video was interesting and useful, please give it a like and a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to see what's coming up next. Thanks a lot.